one and original and ultimate consciousness. Okay. So we are in the chapter reality and the cosmic illusion. So he is now there is a gradation of reality also. There is a gradation of everything. At the lowest level, all the gradations become almost negative. And at the highest level, they all become positive and one. And even the reality also becomes less and less real as it keeps coming down and more and more real in the sense that it becomes permanent reality and impermanent reality in that sense. Okay. It's not that the <clears throat> stone and the tree is not uh, real. It is real, but real in time. Okay, so permanent reality and permanent reality and temporal reality. So let's start reading. Who will read? Any one of you? Uh, can you can you tell me what huh. is the exact meaning of the word canon? Canon. Okay. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Canon means rules. Okay. Rules, framework, uh, rules that you make for yourself. Standards, moral standards. That is what canon means. Um, yeah, we got, came across that word and I have also written out. OK, I'm reading out the definition. Rules, principles, standards in any particular field of activity. Standards which we accept. It's a rule that we accept. It was meant by canon. OK. Yeah, normally the word <laughs> means that, yeah, the, the one that fires a missile. <laughs> OK, so shall we start reading? <clears throat> yeah, Archanadi, you want to read? Yes, Nagata. Yes, I'm reading. Go ahead. An original, an original and ultimate consciousness would be a consciousness of the infinite and necessarily unitarian in its view of diversity, integral, all accepting, all embracing, all discriminating, because all determining, an indivisible whole vision. It would see the essence of things and regard all forms and movements as phenomena and consequence of the essential reality, motions and formations of its power of being. It is held by the reason that truth must be empty of any conflict of contradictions. If so, since the phenomenal universe is or seems to be the contrary of the essential Brahman, it must be unreal. Since individual being is the contrary of both transcendence and universality, it must be unreal. But what I fear as contradictions to a reason based on the finite may not be contradictions to a vision or a larger reason based on the infinite. What our mind sees as contraries may be to the infinite consciousness, not contraries, but complementaries. Essence and phenomenon of the essence are complementary to each other, not contradictory. The phenomenon manifests the essence. The finite is a circumstance and not a contradiction of the infinite. The individual is a self-expression of the universal and the transcendent. It is not a contradiction or something quite other than it. It is the universal concentrated and selective. It is one with the transcendent in its essence of being and its essence of nature. In the view of this unitarian comprehensive seeing, there is nothing contradictory in a formless essence of being that carries a mul multitude of forms or in a status of the infinite, supporting a kinesis of the infinite or in an infinite oneness expressing itself in a multiplicity of beings and aspects and powers and movement. For they are beings and aspects and powers and movements of the one. A world creation on this basis is a perfectly natural and normal and inevitable movement, which in itself raises no problem, since it is exactly what one must expect in an action of the infinite. All the intellectual problem and difficulty is raised by the finite reason cutting, separating, opposing the power of the infinite beauty. Its kindness to its status, its natural multiplicity to its essential oneness, segmenting self, opposing spiritual nature. To understand truly the world 
process of the infinite and the trying process of the eternal, the consciousness must pass beyond this finite reason and the finite sense to a larger reason and spiritual sense in touch with the consciousness of the infinite and <clears throat> responsive to the logic of the infinite, which is the very logic of being itself and arises inevitably from its self-operation of its own realities. A logic whose sequence are not the steps of thought, but the steps of existence. Okay, so uh, if you want to reduce it to a very simple statement, there is no contradiction in the ultimate reality. There seems to be a contradiction at the lower level where manifestation is there, but it is only a seeming because your instrument of vision, what you are seeing, is like a broken glass. You have got spectacles, but the spectacles are broken, so you see only pieces. Okay, replace your broken spectacles with a good spectacles. You will see the whole, you will see everything. You won't see parts and broken parts. That's what he's saying. Using reason is the instrument at the lower level, which you are using because you have no other way. As you keep rising in consciousness, the instrument goes on changing and you get better and better vision, better and better hearing, better and better understanding of things. Essentially, that's what he's saying. So quickly, I will summarize what he's saying and then we'll go on to sentence by sentence. We can go quite fast because the basic idea is very simple. The seed is the essence and the tree with its multiplicity is the manifestation in the physical world. The seed is timeless and spaceless. The tree is in time and space. It grows. There is movement. The seed, there is no movement in the seed. Okay. The one and the many, the static and the dynamic, the infinite and the finite. These are the things that you have to see. So. I am reading out the summary and then we will go on to each sentence. Summary because then we get an overall picture of what he is saying in the para. Okay, so. Yeah. so, a further objection could be that what has been discussed concerns the cosmic consciousness. Just one second. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I think I have got the wrong page. What was the page that, uh, the, uh, an original, yeah. So 497, huh? Mm. Just one second. Yes. My page jumps sometimes. 491, 491, Rangada. Oh, 491, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 491. So I'll get 491 and then, that's right. Yeah, I got it. So, but the steps of the existence. So, what he's saying briefly is, yeah, the divine ultimate consciousness okay, sees all as the infinite, indivisible whole. It would see the original essence of things and regard the world of phenomenal forms. The essential, original essence is a seed and the world of phenomenal forms is a tree with all its multiple fruits and flowers and branches and twigs and whatnot. As an expression, a manifestation of that essence. Expression is different and it is the essence is different. The one and the many. Reason can say that truth and reality must be completely free of all contradictions. Because if there is a contradiction, there is truth and there is falsehood. So reason can say that absolute truth has to be without contradictions. This is obvious. Because if there is a contradiction, then there is a difference. One is true and one is false. Therefore, absolute truth must be free of contradictions. If so, the world could also be called unreal and false because there is contradictions in the physical world. But Brahman's sight is not the same as mind sight. Okay. Brahman sight is different and mind sight. Mind sight is broken glasses. Brahman sight is 
absolutely perfect, even without glasses, even <laughs> without even spectacles. Reason sees contraries, spiritual vision sees complementaries, not oppositions. Finite and infinite are complementaries. One and the many are complementaries. Saguna and Nirguna are complementaries. Time eternity and timeless eternity are also the same. They are not. Contraries oppose each other, but complementaries complete and include each other. Okay? The complementaries, they merge, they can merge one into the other. Okay. The same magnet can attract and it can also repel. So it's the same magnet which is doing that under circumstances. To understand truly the manifestation of the world and its linkage to the permanent reality, one has to cross the mind regions of finite logic and use the logic of the infinite. This is what Srim is saying in the para. Okay? Very simple, nothing very complicated. So let's go to the beginning of the and quickly read the whole thing. Because sometimes as uh, some words, we have to see how Srim is using those words. Srim is use of words is extremely precise. That's exactly why today in the morning I spent a, a one hour looking at the words that he's using. And when you understand the words, the gradation of the words, it is so marvelous. He's so, so, so precise. Okay. That's why you must know each word what it exactly means. An original and ultimate consciousness, very clear. It is the origin of everything. That means there's nothing above it. And it's also ultimate, the last. Consciousness would be a consciousness of the infinite. Because the infinite is the, in a way of speaking, last. And necessarily unitarian in its view of diversity, integral. Unitarian in its view of diversity. It may see diversity but it also sees the oneness behind all the diversity. Integral, absolutely. It does not exclude anything. Integral, it includes everything. If you exclude something, then you are, it's not unitarian. Okay. All determining, it is that which is the thing that dictates terms to the multiplicity. It is that which says, this you will do, this you will do. It is all determining. And indivisible, indivisible Whole vision, it's a vision actually, okay. at the highest level. It would see the essence of things and regard all forms and movements as phenomena and consequences of the essential reality. Very clear, essential reality is the original consciousness and the phenomenon are the expressions and the fruits and leaves and flowers and twigs. That's it, at the lower end. It is held by the reason, reason thinks, that truth must be empty of any conflict of contradictions. That's what normally our mental would say. A truth has to be, wherever you look, there is only truth in it. There cannot be any falsehood. In other words, if there is falsehood, then there is contradiction. So truth must be free of, free of contradictions. That's what he's saying. It's very logical at our level to say that. Okay? Truth must be free of contradictions. But it's not true at the higher level because there can be a fusion of <laughs> complementariness, if you want. There can be a fusion at the higher level. So, if so, now look, this is how Srinandu is saying. We are saying that reason thinks that truth must be absolute, there cannot be any contradictions. But it can be challenged. So Srinandu is now arguing on that basis. If it is so, if it is true that the reason has got some amount of um, legibility, okay, it is understandable, okay, legitimateness if you want. If so, since the phenomenal universe is or seems to be contradictory, sorry, contrary, of the essential Brahman, in what way? In every way. The Brahman is one, the world is many. The Brahman is eternal, the world is phenomenal, it is unreal, and there is uh, the formlessness and form. In every way, it is contrary. 
it must be unreal. So you can't prove that it's unreal. Since individual being is a contrary of both transcendence and universality, it must be unreal. So note again, he is telling you that basically the divine has three levels. There's a transcendence where there is no manifestation, no world, no universe. Only the divine exists. He is looking inwards. He is not looking outwards. So that is transcendence. Universality, he is looking outwards and expanding what is there in himself. It becomes a cosmos. And in the cosmos, there are the many. And each of the many also contains the essential reality. So these are the three levels, transcendence, universality, and the physical world. And therefore, the physical world is unreal. Okay, that's what he said. But what appears as contradictions to a reason based on the finite may not be contradictions to a vision or a larger reason based on the infinite. What our mind sees as contraries may be to the infinite consciousness, not contraries, but complementaries. They are all complementary. Essence and phenomenon are of the essence are complementary to each other. Essence is a reality, the one and the phenomenon, just like the tree and the seed. The tree and the seed is a wonderful uh, image to understand. The seed is the essence and the phenomenon is the tree. Fruits, flowers, leaves, branches, twigs, roots okay, of the essence are complementary to each other, not contradictory. The phenomenon manifests the essence. This is another way of expressing. Whenever he says expression, that is again the same phenomenon you can see. When a poet has got a poem in his head, he has not manifested it. It is essentially there in him. But when he manifests it, it is put on paper by using words and it is now manifest. So that's the difference. Okay. So phenomenon manifests the essence. Whenever you think of manifestation, you must understand that. <clears throat> Finite is a circumstance and not a contradiction of the infinite. It's only a circumstance. There are many circumstances. So the finite is always a circumstance. Finite is not a contradiction of the infinite. The individual is a self-expression of the universal and the transcendent. It is not a contradiction of something quite other than it. Again, the universe and the individual. The universe can contract itself into an individual and the individual can expand his consciousness and become universal. This, this thing is just like the salt in the sea which is universe, and if you evaporate the water, it becomes a grain of salt. That's the individual. So the individual can become, that's why a cosmic consciousness is possible. Okay, so self-expression universe. It is not a contrary to something other than it. It's a universal, concentrated and selective. Okay. The individual is a universal, but it is concentrated and selective. It is one with the transcendent in its essence of being and its essence of nature. Essentially, it is the one and this is the Advaita philosophy. It can take other aspects, but the Advaita philosophy stresses on the essentiality. Okay. Not that the other views are wrong. They are right, but they are at a lower level. The absolute highest level, Advaita is the truth. Okay, so... In the view of this Unitarian comprehensive seeing, now note the word comprehensive, it includes everything. The word apprehensive is again different. It apprehends, it gets hold of things differently. Okay, It apprehends, it holds. But when you hold something, it will be finite. So comprehensive and apprehensive are opposites. Seeing, there is nothing contradictory in a formless essence of being that carries a multitude of forms. So the seed carries all the multiplicity of the tree. Fruits, flowers, leaves, everything. There is no contradiction. Or in a status of the infinite, supporting a kindness of the infinite. The status of the that which is silent contains in itself all the movement. That's what it is. 
supporting a kinesis of the infinite or in an infinite oneness expressing itself in a multiplicity of beings and aspects and powers and movements so <clears throat> he uses different words to express the same thing the one becoming the many in so many different ways and also note how inclusive he is in it he saying uh, aspects and so infinite oneness expressing itself in a multiplicity of beings and aspects and powers and movements so you can see how he is including everything multiplicity of beings okay. trees are beings animals are beings human beings are beings everything is a being multiplicity of beings and aspects even one <laughs> take the cat as a being but it has different aspects of the cat so he is including the word aspects and also powers each one the power goes on changing and movements there are different movements so he includes everything beings aspects powers and movements also if you see in another way powers belongs to the vital and the movements belong to the physical you can see it in that also so he is including everything mind life body for they are beings and aspects and powers and movements of the one a world creation on this basis is a perfectly natural and normal and inevitable movement which in itself raises no problem the seed is creating the tree and there is no problem in it at all we understand that fully well since it is exactly what one must expect in an action of the infinite the infinite has to include everything in it all the intellectual problem and difficulty is raised by the finite reason whose nature is to cut separate oppose the power of the infinite in its being its kinesis to its status okay it opposes the infinite and the finite it opposes movement kinesis to static condition silence and movement its natural multiplicity to its essential oneness not the word natural multiplicity natural in the sense of belonging to nature and nature is at the lower level and nature is therefore always multiple and essential at the highest level is always one segmenting itself cutting itself opposing spirit to nature to understand truly the world process of the infinite and the time process of the eternal the consciousness must pass beyond this finite reason and to the finite sense to a larger reason and spiritual sense in touch with the consciousness of the infinite and responsive to the logic of the infinite we have to go beyond the mind and going beyond the mind is raising yourself to the level 2 spiritual planes of consciousness which is the very logic of being itself and arises inevitably from its self operation of its own realities a logic whose sequences are not steps of thought but the steps of existence they are not steps of thought thought belong to the mind but existence sat at the highest level so you have to go beyond thinking and you have to go to the substance the substance of the highest level sat so that completes the para essentially it is very simple the one becoming the many is not a contradictory movement it's a complementary movement we can go on to the next paragraph but what has thus been described okay so should i should i ask yes please uh, what what is this that right if if we say that it's only a cosmic consciousness and there is the absolute the absolute cannot be limited since universe and individual limit and divide the absolute they must be unreal it is self evident indeed that the absolute cannot be limited it can be limited neither by the formlessness nor by form neither by unity nor by multiplicity neither by immobile status nor by dynamic mobility if it manifests to form if it manifests to form form cannot limit it if it manifests multiplicity multiplicity cannot divide it if it manifests motion and becoming 
Motion cannot perturb nor becoming changes. It cannot be limited any more than it can be adjusted by self-creation. Even material things have the superiority to their manifestation. Earth is not limited by the vessels made from it, not, nor air by the winds that moves in it, nor the sea by the waves that rise on its surface. This impression of limitation belongs only to the mind and sense, which see the which see the finite as if it were the un, in, independent entity separating itself from the infinite or something cut out of it by limitation. It is to this impression that is illusory, but neither the but neither the infinite nor the finite is an illusion, for neither exists by by the impressions of the sense or the mind, they depend they depend for their existence on the absolute. Yeah. Okay. So he has himself given many many examples here. Very interesting. Okay. Air and sea. So he is saying that when the sea manifests waves, the wave cannot cancel the sea. <laughs> Okay, exactly the same way. No wave can cancel the sea. The sea is the infinite and the wave is the finite. So a finite is not the ultimate reality. The, the fi infinite remains right where it is. That's what he's saying. Okay. So again, we will quickly look at the summary and then we'll go into each word. Okay? Because he is himself given the um, images, sea, air and all that. So we'll have a look at that. Okay. Yeah. So, a further objection. Now, be very interesting. So, he's saying, what I am saying can be challenged. Okay. And he examines every aspect of the challenge. He himself raises the challenge before the opponent can raise the challenge. And he answers it. This is his way of answering. That means it shows how aware he is of what he's saying and the contradiction. Sometimes when I make a statement, I may not anticipate the opposition to it. Somebody else may come out with it. When I'm in a meeting and I say something, somebody may come out and challenge me. But I am fully conscious. Sivanda is fully conscious of what can be challenged. And he deals with it even before he can be challenged. So that's what he's saying. A further objection could be, okay, that what has been discussed concerns the cosmic consciousness, the self and the earthly manifestation. So, the absolute is beyond both and cannot have any limitation. But the cosmos and the individual divide the absolute and therefore must be unreal. There is another uh, uh, can be given. You are saying that they are complementary, but I am saying that no, they are not complementary. So, what, what have you to say to that? It is self-evident that the absolute cannot be limited. So, now he is answering that. He is saying, yes, what you are saying is true, that the absolute cannot be limited. So, therefore, the limitations are false. That's what your argument is. And I accept that partially. That's what he's saying. That is exactly, that is easily accepted. Okay? None of the contraries can limit the absolute. Neither form nor formless can limit or condition it. Neither unity nor multiplicity can affect it in any way. Neither can status nor dynamism condition it. So now to explain, he is agreeing to what is, is being said, but he is giving examples. Even in the physical world, we see the same thing happening. The waves do not change the sea, which remains the same. Winds and storms do not alter the air. Clay cannot be limited only to pots and pans. The clay remains, the infinite clay remains. You may make a pot and pan out of it, but that does not cancel the reality of the eternal clay. In that case, where does division and limitation originate? It is in the mind of man that divides, cuts, segments. The indivisible limits the illimitable. The world is not illusion. It's a decisive capacity of the mind that creates. Sorry, uh, the world is not in illusion. It is a divisive. Okay? It divides. 
the divisive capacity of the mind that is creating illusions. But you're not seeing the reality entirely. Change your instruments of knowledge, go to another level and you will see that the, your conclusion of illusiveness, illusoriness of the world is not ultimate. There are other things. That's what he's saying in the pattern. Okay, so fairly simple, nothing much. So he has anticipated the problem, okay, that divisions are there, but now he is adding one more thing. Divisions cannot cancel the unity. The others are assuming that the division proves that the they are false. They are simply saying, no, that's not true. Okay, so very subtle argument, but that's what he is saying. Divisions can never, never cancel the unity of things. In other words, both are real. <laughs> so, what has been described thus, it may be said, not the words, it may be said. This is, we are likely to um, forget the meaning. So he is now discussing the opposition to his own view, which he has expressed earlier in the earlier paragraph. What has thus been described, it may be said, is only a cosmic consciousness and there is the absolute. Okay. The absolute cannot be limited. Since universe and individual limit and divide the absolute, they must be unreal. This is the oppos opposition being raised. Okay. So, the absolute is something that cannot be divided. So, your divisions are all unreal. There is no such thing as division. That's the argument. So, so they is saying, but you can answer that in another way. It is self-evident indeed that the absolute cannot be limited. Accept it. I accept what you're saying. It cannot be limited neither by formlessness nor by form, neither by unity nor by multiplicity, neither by immobile status nor by the dynamic mobility. Okay. Look at the words. Okay. Immobility implies status, static. We may sometimes we use the word status as a, a stage, okay, a certain place. It's not we really understood in that way here. Status means static, non-movement. We have to understand in that way. Nor by dynamic mobility. Dynamic always implies mobility. Okay. <laughs> sometimes there can be dynamism which is held back. That is a static. Okay. If it manifests form, form cannot limit it. If it manifests multiplicity, multiplicity cannot limit it. It manifests multiplicity. It manifests multiplicity. It creates multiplicity. Multiplicity cannot divide. If it manifests motion and becoming motion cannot alter nor becoming change. It's like the glacier and the sea. The glacier is one static, but it creates the waves, uh, sorry, the rivers below. But the rivers cannot say that the glacier doesn't exist. The glacier is real and the river also is real. Okay. The glacier is static. Actually, in, uh, it is not static. It moves at a very, very slow rate, maybe one foot <laughs> per year, something like that. But it's a river of ice. It's very slow movement. So it's an image which you have to see in the right way. That which is static can produce the mobility. That's what it is. So, even more than it can be universal. Even material things have this superiority to their manifestation. Now he's giving examples. Earth is not limited by the vessels made from it. In other words, clay. I'll change the words a little to understand because earth can be understood in so many ways. The material earth he means clay is not limited when pots and pans are made from it. That's what is meant by this sentence. Earth is not limited by the vessels made from it. My language is very, very coarse and uh, very gross. But Sri Ramadha's word is, is so subtle. Huh? Earth is not limited by the vessels made from it. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing in very gross language. Mud, not mud, sorry. Clay cannot be limited by the pots and pans that you made from it. The pot is real and the clay also is real nor air by the winds that move in it, nor the sea by the waves that rise on its surface. The sea is the infinite and the waves are the finite. But the waves don't cancel the sea. They're very much connected. That's what it is. This impression 
of limitation belongs only to the mind and sense which see the finite as if it were an independent entity separating itself from the infinite or something cut out by its limitation it is this impression that is illusory when you are judging everything from a lower level that is what creates illusion but neither the infinite nor the finite is an illusion both exist and both are real one is real in timelessness one is real in time for neither exists by the impressions of the sense or the mind when you go above the sense and the mind you see the real truth they depend for their existence on the absolute so ramakrishna is to explain this very well when the sea is static that is the brahman that's a spiritual reality when the sea starts making waves that is the manifestation that is the earth that's the universe that's all that's what he said so we are now we have got 10 minutes so we can read one more para the absolute is itself since only three of you are there yasmin <laughs> is your chance the absolute is in itself we read it yeah i read it go I ahead i thought you would go through that paragraph but okay just now we went through it i went through it just okay. now the absolute is in itself indefinable by reason ineffable to the speech it has to be approached to experience it can be approached to an absolute negation of existence as if it were a supreme non existence <clears throat> a mysterious infinite nothing <clears throat> it can be approached to an absolute affirmation of all the fundamentals of our existence to an absolute light uh, absolute of light and knowledge to an absolute of love or beauty to an absolute of force to an absolute of peace or silence it can be approached to an inexpressible absolute of being or of consciousness or of power of being or of the light of being or through a supreme experience in which these things become inexpressibly one for we can enter into such an ineffable state and plunge into it as if into a luminous abyss of existence we can reach a super conscience which may be described as the gate of the absolute it is supposed that it is only through a negation of individual and cosmos that we can enter into absolute but in fact the individual need only deny his own small separate ego existence he can approach the absolute through a sublimation of his spiritual individuality taking up the cosmos into himself and transcending it or he may negate himself altogether but even so it is still the individual who by self exceeding enters into the absolute he may enter also by a sublimation sublimation of his being into a supreme existence or super existence by a sublimation of his consciousness into a supreme consciousness or super conscience by sublimation of his and all delight of being into a super delight or extreme ecstasy he can make the approach to an ascension in which he enters into cosmic consciousness assumes it into himself and raises himself and it into a state of being in which oneness and multiplicity are in perfect harmony and unison in a supreme state of manifestation where all are in each and each in all and all in the one without any determining individualization for the dynamic identity and mutuality have become complete on the path of affirmation it is this status of manifestation that is nearest to the absolute this paradox of an absolute which can be realized through an absolute negation 
and through an absolute affirmation in many ways can only be accounted for to the reason if it is a supreme existence which is so far above our notion and experience of existence that it can correspond also to our negation of it our notion and experience of non existence but also since all that exists is that whatever its degree of manifestation it is itself the supreme of all things and can be approached through supreme affirmations as to supreme negations the absolute is a ineffable x overtopping and underlying and imminent and essential in all that we call existence or non existence yeah very interesting uh, there are so many words which you have to pay very close attention to so what I suggest because we have to look at the word sublimation what does he mean by sublimation because he use that word repeatedly that is one. and also he is using the word x <laughs> which is used in mathematics for an unknown quantity okay it's an x so <clears throat> and he say that you can reach divine through absolute negation and you can reach him through absolute affirmation he can be saguna he can be anything you want he can be love he can be power he can be knowledge he can be infinite he can be this he can be that okay but he can also be absolutely nothing absolute absence of everything that also he can be so it's quite a big para so we'll discuss it next time we have got only 3 minutes so i will summarize it quickly for you okay we get the essence of what he is saying all right yeah so what he is saying here the absolute is not definable by reason and speech it is impossible for us to understand what is the absolute the mind cannot one can know it only by experience by going beyond reason by becoming the absolute but it can be approached in any number of ways by negating existence itself as in buddhism or which is a vast infinite nihil that's possible on the other hand it can be entered into by the affirmation of all man's positives the divine is omniscience the divine is omnipotent the divine is omnipresence these are all positives you can approach the divine through negatives as well as positives the negatives are only seeming negatives okay through the absolute of light and knowledge love and beauty full shakti peace silence you can get the divine through all these things it may also be experienced through absolute of being sat consciousness or chit power shakti delight anand we can enter into the absolute in which all these merge into a single oneness which is a luminous abyss of existence a super conscience which is a gate of which is what is meant by gate okay he has expressed elsewhere no one can enter the absolute and come back to the portal since it is beyond mind and speech therefore it is held that man needs to shed his inability and negate himself and cosmos also before experiencing the absolute but actually man needs only to negate his limiting ego his spiritual individuality needs to sublimate itself <laughs> what is meant by sublimation to make subtle subtilize itself infinitely he can go to the absolute through cosmic consciousness in which one and the many become simultaneous and compatible okay? to the, <coughs> that is the triple status of super mind so that's why a little bit of discussion is needed there are many degrees of manifestation the absolute is so far away from reason and affirmation and that negation and affirmation become the same thing saguna and nirguna become compatible at the highest level the absolute is an unknown x that overtops 
underlies, includes everything, and is immanent everywhere. This is what is saying in the para. But we have it's already 35, so we'll redo this para. Okay, it's a very interesting para with lot of words, and we we'll are meeting tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll redo this para. See what is sublimation? What I mean by the gate? Okay, you express that elsewhere. So, hello. Yes, tell me. In chemistry, yeah. uh, the word sublimate is when a physical substance, yes. without going through the liquid state, goes into the gaseous state. Yes, exactly. That is sublimation. That's right. Like ammonia. Yeah. Correct. Like also dry ice, no? Uh, yeah, dry yes, ice. Yes. Yeah. That also evaporates. It doesn't become liquid. Yeah, yeah. Dry ice. It is uh, actually frozen uh, carbon. That's a carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, which yes. goes off into gas and not liquid. Those who uh, get ice cream from uh, ice cream bars, they often use. Dry <laughs> yes. Yes, that's right. Okay, so that's right. Sublimation means that. Okay, so anyway, so we'll meet tomorrow. Okay. Mexico. Okay, Aurora. Okay. Have a nice day. Have a nice day.